Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. The S&P 500 is up about half a percent. The Nasdaq up almost 1%. It's getting a little bit volatile here. We've been pretty volatile all day. We went up for the first about two hours of the day. Intermediate dips here and there, but we did trend to the upside. And that was during the Fed press conference. And then once you got to like halfway through the conference, the markets did just start to sell off in a pretty big way, pretty consistently overall with little bottoms here and there. But we did keep hitting newer lows at a high today. We were at 378.20 at the low. We did hit 372.89. So we are moving around quite a lot on an intraday basis. But ever since we did hit that low about halfway through the trading day, almost exactly. Exactly, the markets have started to go through an uptrend again and pretty much why that is happening is straightforward so the markets they get fearful around potential fear catalysts when the fed speaks it's like hey what's the fed gonna say next could they say hey we're probably already in a recession could they say they're not gonna stop raising rates until the rates are five six seven eight nine ten percent people get a little bit jumpy when it comes to big fear catalyst once that catalyst is over you tend to see a bullish reaction well because the catalyst is over and you're not going to get any new bad information so that's why the markets are really rallying here today just a little bit half percent on the s p decent day overall but coming here in about 30 minutes time you're going to get the fed bank stress test results and that is going to be more important than, than the fed in my personal opinion because i think it's clear we're heading into a recession but the difference between a recession and a depression usually comes down to the banking sector and if the banks are not in a good situation to uh, absorb some losses to continue to lend out capital right to function as a bank if banks start to go bankrupt we're in for a very very rocky road and that's the difference between a recession and a depression so i think people are going to pay very close attention to this report that does come out in about half an hour and i think that will move the market specifically obviously the banks in a big way and it's something that we must pay attention to it will not be said in this video because we still have like i said uh, 30 minutes until that does come out but the video that is going to be released around 4 30 today 4 35 o'clock we will cover everything that was said in that stress test and go over some of the banks and where they currently sit as far as liquidity uh, is concerned so i think that's going to be uh, a very big catalyst and i think that will dictate what happens tomorrow for the markets either a big red day or a big green day and it even can affect things heading into next week we do have some data points that come out next week like pce uh personal consumption expenditures you do also have the uh, ism manufacturing data and a couple other data points that could be pretty important and why data is actually more important than really anything else is because the markets are juggling between you know a recession inflation what do we care about most what is most important when it comes down to it the overall uh, just GDP numbers, the economy, that's going to be the main focus point of investors, the odds of a recession. And then ultimately, if we could lead into a multi-year recession or if it will be a sharp, quick recession, that's what you guys are going to start hearing a lot of talk about as, uh, really when we do uh, get to July 28th. And like I think it will be confirmed that we are in a recession. So, we got a lot more to talk about here in this video. Go over everything specific around AMC stock as well as the broad markets that you guys need to know. So hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys find value out of the video. Get your free stocks with Webull, Mumu, and Public down below in the description. And if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video as well. As well as that in the pinned comment, you can also find that link. We did uh, just cash out of about 70% on a square trade that was made yesterday about $250 in profits that trade alone off of a $300 initial uh you know 
trade would have paid for that cost of the program for well over a year just in one trade we also do have an affirm trade and we did just make a fedex earnings trade as well that affirm is up like 45 percent so if you guys want access to all of that like i said link down below in the description nonetheless let's get into all of this information that you guys need to know we will go to twitter and see i've reposted some things so that is also going to be linked in the pinned comment as well go ahead follow me on twitter it's literally free 99 and i do like to retweet and share things that are important uh specifically to the markets and nothing else but four hours ago i retweeted powell the u.s has a very strong and recovered economy it, Powell, maybe he lives under a rock. Maybe he doesn't see what is going on in the real economy. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He's obviously got money and, and he's not uh, a regular person, quote unquote, uh, as far as economic status um, is concerned. So I think that's really not what the markets want to hear. I don't think the markets agree with those kind of statements. You also do have Ken Griffin is moving his Citadel HQ from Chicago to Miami. And then you do have b o f a global research saying oil could hit 150 dollars per barrel that would obviously be a very negative thing for the stock market for the economy that's that's going to 100 percent solidify a recession and probably a bad one at that the price of oil is the single worst thing that is going on currently in the economy if the price of oil were to fall back down let's say gas were to go to like three dollars a gallon again or 350 it's possible you could avoid a recession or it would be a very small recession if oil stays you know up so high keeping gas prices around five dollars a gallon of gas for the national average uh, there's no way to avoid a recession and we're probably already in one to be honest with you guys we will get that advanced estimate for q2 gdp coming july 28th and around then uh if it's negative that's when uh we would be declared in a recession fed powell also said one hour one hour ago our judgment in real time proved to be incorrect so obviously it was incorrect you do also have this the opec plus scene uh, reconfirming plans for August oil output rise of 640,000 barrels per day for August at meeting next week. So that is bullish. More supply of oil should bring down the price of oil. And that's the most important thing when it comes to the markets, uh, when it comes to CPI, when it comes to the overall recession odds for America. It's number one, the price of oil. That's all that matters now fed jerome paul also said one hour ago liquidity in the treasury market has come down to where it was i am looking at ways to address that so uh you know a lot of liquidity issues in the treasury market obviously qt does not help anything when the fed is going out and letting uh treasury bonds run off their balance sheet i mean what do you really expect to happen so that is uh very interesting at the same time look at the vix guys the vix is up 1.55 percent today and the nasdaq is up 1.19 percent you usually should not see the vix up 1.5 percent at the same time the nasdaq is up 1.21 percent it's not uh a good sign Let's just call it that because the VIX is monitoring the S&P 500 puts and calls. If the VIX is, is up 1.5%, that means there is more puts going on to the markets than calls going on to the markets on a substantially green day. Uh, it's not a solid sign and it's probably uh, due to this bank stress test uh, results that we are going to be getting here in about 25 minutes time. That is going to be such a big catalyst for the markets. Uh, and, and I do think by the time you guys likely see this video, the markets will have uh, seen a pretty decent reaction to that. Some big candles uh, should be on the S&P, NASDAQ, and the Dow once that report does come out. And on banks uh, at the same time. That's why banks have uh, not really been doing so well. A big potential fear catalyst for them. Uh, so that is what is currently going on. Now, as far as the bond market, 10-year treasuries down 0.08% today so they're down about eight basis points what this is telling you especially with the move that we seen yesterday is that people are super fearful over a 
recession. When people are fearful over a recession, they go out and buy bonds because that is a safe return. And during a recession, you expect deflation. So you expect, obviously, stocks not to do well, uh, basically nothing to do well. Uh, but you also do expect inflation to come down during a recession, the price of oil to plummet through the floor like what happened in 2008. And then in that case, a 3% return if a recession were to play out is not a bad return if you have millions and millions of dollars. Think about it. For $1 million, you can make $30,000 a year risk-free uh, and you're in a recession. Not a bad move for a lot of people that do have more money, uh, you know, to work with so that is what is going on the bond yields are not dropping because we are expecting inflation to go down or we are expecting the fed to slow down raising rates the bonds are dropping because people are fearful of a recession and it looks like it's starting to be priced into the markets more and more over the last couple of days so i think that is a pretty telling mix that with the vix and i do still think you are in for more downside but Again, I do reiterate that I think we could see a bullish reaction in the markets until we get at least to next week and further into the week. So for next, uh, let's see, for next Wednesday, you do have the uh, GDP growth rate for Q1, the final numbers, corporate profits, quarter over quarter, core PCE prices. You do have some uh, oil uh, data as well, and that's going to all be uh, very, very important information. Um, on Tuesday, I don't believe you have really anything. You do have wholesale inventories, goods, trade balance, um, Dallas Fed service revenues, but nothing too crazy that that's going to move the markets. On Monday, you do have durable good orders month over month for May. That is expected to be a high volatility catalyst event, and that could be a little bit more important than not, but the markets don't tend to move too much based off of the durable goods orders. You do also have pending home sales year over year and pending home sales month over month that comes out at 9 a.m. on Monday. And then on Thursday, you do have personal income month over month for May, personal spending month over month for May, PCE price index year over year, PCE price index month over month, initial jobless claims, core PCE price, uh, core PCE price index month over month and year over year. So I think Thursday is definitely going to be the big day for next week. And until Thursday, until we get some kind of bad economic data, then I, I think you're probably in for... A little bit of a rally rather than not, like I already said. And then on Friday, the big data point is going to be ISM manufacturing PMI for June. So keep all of that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. I still think there is more downside, but I'm still sticking with my bullish call for AMC stock and for the broad markets over the next, uh, call it a week from today. Now, the current short interest of free flow on AMC stock is sitting at 22.58%. Current shares that are sold short of 116.38 million. Cost bar minimum of 17.61%. Cost bar average of 23.23%. Cost bar max of 34%. So the cost bar numbers are certainly spiking here today. And that is because I personally believe there is not that many shares left to actually be lent out if there is any shares at all. I think the flow is really locked up right now. And I do think a lot of the back and forth price action moves that we're seeing with AMC stock really is coming down to the option activity. Lots of bearish option activity you guys can see even for the daily expirations uh, or weekly call it that expire tomorrow. There's $40,000 in an option that expires tomorrow to the put side that's very close to the money. So when that happens, you see market makers go out and short stock because they legally have to uh, you know, provide that liquidity and be able to actually make a slight profit off of that. So they have to go out and short shares when people do buy a lot of put, put options and that's leverage. So if you get $1 million of a put position or like this one that expires tomorrow, a $20 put worth $1.5 million, well, there's a lot of leverage on that with these options. So the market makers have to go out and short a lot of stock to uh, uh, essentially let um, the option buyer sell it at a slightly uh, higher price, right, at the $20 strike. So that's really what is going on on a day-to-day -day basis with AMC stock, and that's why the cost of borrow numbers have been so high as of recently. Days to cover sitting at 3.70, free flow out on loan at 37.28%.
percent so the data here uh, looking very very good in my personal opinion again the next big option expiration is going to be July 15th you have about 6200 calls that are in the money 428,000 calls that are out of the money and that is definitely going to uh, be important not only for July 15th but over the next couple of weeks since the premiums are so cheap and the stock is only trading in the, the $11 range if you do see a move to the upside and some of these July uh, you know expiration calls start to go into the money in a big way that's gonna mean market makers have to go out and buy a lot of stock as as well so that is pretty much all of that if we do take a look at the actual technicals for AMC stock, AMC is down about 7.5%. We're approaching this, this range that I have right here. I have this line drawn up at about $11.45 per share. And that's going to be the key level I want to watch to the downside. Just because of how many times we have found support around here in the past. 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 days out of the last... I uh, call it 30 trading days, give or take. Uh, well, actually, probably less than that, like 20, 25 trading days. You've uh, found support there about nine times. So I think it's very substantial. That's even what happened today. That was really the low of the day. You guys can see the bottom end of this wick came straight to this level, retraced back to the upside. So that's the main level I want to watch for the downside. And that's where, where I think. Uh, it's very important to pay attention to as far as the potential upside that is going to come because of the fed bank stress test results or the markets just chilling out um in general if we do see that bullish reaction like i expect i do still think we could end around you know 15 dollars by tomorrow if we do see a good reaction from the bank stress test and an overall you know just bullish market over the next day or so uh you need to break out above the 50 day moving average or 100 day moving average i should say at 13 dollars 79 cents per share 50 day moving average at 16 dollars 7 cents per share we're getting pretty close and the longer we stay just flat going back and forth up and down but not really doing anything these moving averages are going to come down and that should help to you know make it not so hard to break out above those moving averages and to see a uh, bigger move than not to the upside so that there is that the rsi is at 43.60 so definitely on the oversold side and the macd still slightly bullish we'll see if that changes by the end of the day it's been bullish for a very a uh, long amount of time it feels like it's been a, a decent amount of time but in all reality um it's only been like a month and a half and the stock has stayed pretty flat over the last uh, month and a half going up coming down going up coming down but really staying for the most part in between about eleven dollars and uh twelve dollars per share eleven dollars to thirteen dollars per share uh, you're really staying in that range. So nonetheless, we got a lot of other things to talk about in later on videos today, like the Fed Bank stress test results. That's going to be a key. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the to the channel for that one. But at the same time is that we do need to talk about the margin calls and where we are currently at as far as that is concerned, because it's quite scary what we're seeing as far as potential margin calls. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. You guys already know the deal. Get your free stock down below in the description with Weeble, Moomoo, and Public. And if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description or in the pinned comment of this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.